So why is Cat Island named Cat Island? Arthur Cat, a pirate, who is also one of the close friends of Blackbeard, was an English pirate sailing here in the beginning of the 18th century. Cat Island may also be named Cat Island to refer to its one time very large population of feral cats. And I can say there are many cats on this island indeed. So we hope that you watched our first part, but now we're going to take you on an excursion around the island and we will show you some of the most interesting places that we found. The administration center on the island is in Arthurstown. It doesn't look like a capital city at all. There's a cemetery, a police station. The total population of the island is roughly about 1,500, but of course, it changes depending on the season. There is an airport near Arthurstown, but it is temporarily closed because it is under construction and the construction on the Bahamas can take forever. Before, there were two operating airports, one in Arthurstown and one in New Bight. It was very convenient to have two airports in different parts of the island. But now there's only one main airport and one small private airport. And now to get to one of the most interesting places on the southwest part of the island, we actually have to cross that private one way. We have to stop at a stop sign, look around to make sure there are no planes landing or taking off, and safely drive across. Where else in the world would they put a road crossing an airport runway regulated by a stop sign? The place we're going is just a simple marina for boats and yachts called Hawk Nest. Something about this place makes it very famous. When the tide is changing from low to high, lots of sharks are usually seen here. It is really easy to see nurse sharks, lemon sharks, hammerhead sharks, and other large and small. You're probably wondering, why is this the case? When deep water fishing boats come back from their successful fishing trips, they usually clean their fish right there and they throw any fish leftovers right into the water. These super sensitive creatures from nearby deep waters gather here for a free meal. It seems that they've made themselves very comfortable and they seem so safe close to humans. When we came here, there were no sharks, no fishing boats, and it was actually a low tide. We were quite disappointed, but we did have some frozen fish leftovers from the day before, and we decided that it was worth a try. We started to make noise, splashes, and we poured some of the fish blood into the water. The sharks arrived within a few minutes. We didn't have that many treats to offer, but what we did have was enough for a short socializing experience. It was fun. The sharks came too close trying to get a piece of fish. They almost jumped out of the water. I strongly advise for any visitors to not swim or step into the water here due to the danger from these sharks. In places where sharks are regularly being fed by humans, these large fish develop a reflex. Humans equal food, and this could trigger unintentional aggression towards humans. For this reason, in many parts of the world, feeding sharks is prohibited. You can get here by private plane or boat. In this part, there are lots of villas and cottages available for rent. So if we ever come here, we will make sure that we stay here. Kilometers of sandy beaches with crystal blue water. What else could you need for a perfect vacation? The southwest part of the island has a very famous historical and architectural site. It is located at the top of the Alvernia Mountain and it is the highest point in all of Bahamas. It is 65 meters above the sea. It is actually really easy to catch this place. All you do is park, the entrance is free, and you climb the mountain, which is roughly about 30 minutes. This place is called Hermitage, or the locusts call it Como Hill. Father Jerome, Monsignor John Hawes, was a skilled architect and sculptor. He built this monastery in 1942 he was 62 when he started building, and this place was made for himself to get away from the world and spend the rest of his life here praying. He was buried here after he died. He was buried, as per his request, barefoot and without a coffin, in a cave on the hillside just beneath his one-man monastery. The monastery looks much bigger in this video, but in reality, it was more like a very small medieval castle. 
the kitchen was less than one square meter, and the cell where Father Jerome slept was just enough to fit a bench-like bed. Father Jerome was a professional architect and built lots of buildings around the Bahamas, England, Australia. He built churches, cathedrals, schools. He was a really hard-working man, and he was really demanding. A fantastic view opens from the top of the mountain. It is possible to observe the Atlantic and the Caribbean side of the island. It was a very hot day and we were getting really tired and thirsty, so we decided to go back to the car. We will definitely return here to spend more time in silence, feeling the same way as Father Jerome said. It should breathe forth an atmosphere of prayer, of religious awe and supernatural mystery. Cat Islands, along with all other Bahamian islands, has a lot of blue holes. It is sometimes impossible to find any information about them or access them, or to access their location. So we just use satellite map imaging. Sometimes we have to walk from the road in the heat through the forest, the prickly bushes on foot in order to discover these new beautiful blue holes. There was always a lot of mystery and unexplained stories behind these blue holes. Local people believe that there are monsters and sirens that live in these holes. They believe that these holes can hypnotize people into making them do strange things. One local man told us a story a while ago about how farmers threw a dead cow into a blue hole because it was very challenging to dig big graves in the limestone. It was a very big surprise when on the very next day, fishermen saw that exact same cow far open in the ocean. An inland blue hole filled with salt water and just an entrance to the other ground caves one. The blue holes can be very deep and diving into them associating with great danger. Only very professional divers can actually do this. Blue holes create a very unique ecosystem because it's very dark and deep. There are currents, there's not a lot of oxygen and it is absent of any aerobic bacteria to save anything. Every bone and artifact is actually in ideal condition, and this makes it very valuable for scientific research. When we were searching for blue holes, we discovered one small cave filled with fresh water, and to our surprise, we found some very cute turtles. In the beginning, they were of course running away from us and hiding, but we had some treats for them, like watermelon and some bananas. And we had to show them that we had these because otherwise if we threw them into the water it would sink directly to the bottom of the cave missing the turtles so we decided to use a fishing rod to earn their trust and it was successful the turtles slowly became our friends and started th taking the treats from our hands they're called jamaican sliders or cat island slider because 60 percent of their entire population lives on cat island the turtles' conservation status is under concern and their population is declining due to a loss of fresh water. Human activities and strong hurricanes contaminate freshwater ponds with salt water. Another threat is the red-eared slider turtles. It is strictly prohibited to bring them into the Bahamas or to keep them as a pet. Luckily, in that moment, there were no red-eared sliders. Turtles are omnivorous. So they were looking at my finger like they wanted to bite it. The natural turtles predators include dogs, cats, hawks, raccoons. We feel that the local people probably feed these turtles and most likely show them to the tourists. It was very suspicious how quickly these turtles began to trust us. It is impossible to find any information about this place or many other places on the island, on the internet or on any flyers. Everything we discovered, we discovered ourselves. We also discovered this pile of garbage in the middle of this beautiful forest. I'm pretty sure it is illegal dumping. But garbage is in fact a very big problem on the island and local people are trying really hard to reduce the amount of trash as there is a very low possibility of recycling. Cat Island has two main sides, the Caribbean and the Atlantic. The Caribbean side has the most beautiful sandy beaches, blue, clear water, no big waves. 
And a majority of the population does live on the Caribbean side. The Atlantic side, on the other hand, is different, with deeper waters closer to shore, which creates big waves. There are also not that many houses or resorts, and it is very windy. The big waves bring a lot of garbage back to the shore. The ocean is returning human waste back to the humans. The weather on Cat Island changes quite fast. Just in a few minutes, the blue sky can turn into a severe thunderstorm. The very short land barrier between the Atlantic and the Caribbean Ocean, in some areas, no more than a mile, this distance can create a fast changing weather condition. Dangerous lightning can cause forest fires, and then the strong rain will extinguish that. Palm trees, in this case, are still smoking and the ashes are still warm. We arrived just on time to gash this. There are many beautiful beaches on the Atlantic side of the island too. Like this one, with pink sand, called Flamingo Point. To get here, you have to drive on a dirt road, which is about an hour long. On the Atlantic side, across from the island, from Arthur's Town, we found a very interesting place with a big human-made canal, probably for boat access, to a developing property in an abandoned property site. We think that this is probably one of the failed developments common to the Caribbean. Here we also saw piles of hundreds of dead pink conch cells. This is actually very typical for Caribbean islands. Pink conch population is sharply declining due to overfishing and soon there will be no more pink conch shells left in the sea. Cat Island is small. It covers only about 390 square kilometers of land. We spent most of our time on the north part of the island where we found many blue holes, turtles. A few times we actually visited Orange Creek, which is a very beautiful place with a lot of opportunities for fishing. Just across the island from our cottage on the Atlantic shore, we're driving a dirt road for about 40 minutes. We found a beautiful beach with blue water. There was absolutely nobody there. Kilometers of sandy beaches, no houses, no people. It was really important for us to keep our cell phones just in case of emergency or even just for navigation purposes or to find any important information. When we travel to new places or any new countries, we always buy a local SIM card from a local service provider. It is really convenient and it's very inexpensive compared to roaming. Within a 15 minute drive south from our cottage, we found another interesting and beautiful place called Pigeon K. It is a very big area covered with shallow water inhabited by bonefish. Bonefish makes it really attractive for people who like fly fishing. The bo this bonefish is actually a very desirable fly fishing tr sport trophy. The fish is really smart, sensitive, and really hard to catch if you don't have any experience. The food quality is poor and the fish is seldom eaten due to its bony flesh, and in most cases it is caught and released. We found kilometers of amazing beaches, but there weren't too many houses and it is difficult to find anything to rent. Now we have to go food shopping to refill our food supplies for cooking. We have to go buy a local SIM card from an alive provider and the office is really close to the supermarket. We went to the supermarket in the center part of the island. There are a few supermarkets with a slightly different assortment of food. We also went to Auvergne Food Place near the government dock at Smith Bay. The food supply comes only once a week by boat. So it isn't that big of a variety. It is a small family run business. There's also a very decent liquor store with a good selection. After we were done shopping, we noticed that we have a flat tire and we called the car rental owner and received instructions on where to drive to an auto repair place 15 minutes away. The mechanic told us that the tire is unrepairable and I would actually need to be replaced. Since one identical tile is impossible to find, we needed to change both. We decided to check the surrounding area. Nearby was an old church building, a school that was closed for the summer break. The education on the Bahamas is actually free. 
Medical care is free for Bahamian citizens too. Over 50% of the economy is tourism. A majority of the tourists from the United States and are from Canada. Around 3 million people come here and visit every year. We realize that we're losing our time waiting for new tires, so we just asked them to put a spare tire on and we continued with our next discovery. There were some caves on the island that we found which were not filled with water. Before the island was discovered by Europeans, Aboriginals used these caves as a shelter to hide during hurricane season, and later these caves were hiding places for slaves that were brought to the island. Now these caves are home to bats and large cave crickets, or camel crickets. These crickets were hiding when we came, and when we stayed there for a little while, quietly, for a few minutes, they came out, and they came very close to us, curiously studying us. When they realized that we're not a danger to them, they started to make these really loud squeaky noises. They look very scary. They have these long legs and long antennas. So many of them actually reminded us of those alien insects from the movie Man in Black. Just later, we learned that they can live in a house and disturb the owner with these noisy sounds, and it is very difficult to get rid of them. We are sure that this beautiful and mysterious island didn't share all of its secrets with us, and we're hoping that we will one day return. <laughs>